Welcome to another video tutorial from 2DGameArtGuru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape to show you how to create consistent fills across objects. I'm working with the circle tool, the pen tool, use a taper and a power stroke and gradients. I chose an octopus as a perfect example with a shape as the body and strokes as the tentacles. When you use gradients with multiple colors and attach objects to them, it can be really hard to match those gradients. In this video, I want to show you a handy little way to do that. I'll start with the body shape, which is just a circle. I duplicate the circle to create some eyes. I group the eye and duplicate it to be used on the other side. For the tentacles, I prefer to use the pen over the pencil tool. It creates less notes. I had the spiral graph still turned on. Don't really need that. Again, it creates too many notes. It's easier to work with less notes when working with tapered strokes or power strokes in case you want to manipulate the way the curve flows. I use the taper stroke for this one and you get two nodes that adjust the taper. You slide them along the curve and in this case I don't want to taper all the way, I just want the end bit to taper nicely. That way the tentacle has a certain thickness throughout most of the length of the curve. The big advantage of this approach is I can easily adjust my tentacles. Seeing the lines consist of very few nodes, it's easy to manipulate and change the curves. That way the tentacles look more interesting and less like repeated copies. Once I'm done with one side, I select them all, duplicate and mirror them, and then modify one side. Symmetry definitely has its appeal, but I want something that looks a little bit more interesting, so I do minor variations to the tentacles. It's quickly done, seeing the curves just consist of three to four nodes. With all the elements of the design in place, it's time to have some fun with the gradient. I try to make it a multicolor gradient going from a dark red to an orange to a yellow. To help me align the gradient properly to all my objects, I create two little helper shapes simple circles, crosses, whatever works. I just need something to snap the start and the end point of the gradient to. Once the gradient of the body is aligned between those two circles, I start with the tentacles. They all get the same gradient, except it won't let me use the same gradient. I can either manually assign the same gradient to them which is not really a good option. Or I can just assign the gradient to one tentacle, because now I have lines everywhere. So I just assign it to that one tentacle and then copy that and paste the style via edit paste style to all the others. It would have been helpful if I aligned the gradient properly and not in the reverse order. So let's do it again. Align the gradient from the darker to the lighter. This way around it should work. And then copy this one, select all the others and do the edit paste style. The result is a gradient that works seamlessly on the whole design. If I move an object now using the node tool, nothing will change. The gradients will stay in place. If I use the move tool, on the other hand, the gradient will follow the move tool. Manipulating via the node tool is key. It's easy to change a gradient once you've set it up. I change the colors of the body and just assign the new gradient to the tentacles. Once an object has a gradient and a gradient direction assigned, it's easy to switch between different gradients. One thing to remember is the hiding of the helper shapes. To distinguish between the tentacles, I add some shading. Rather than manipulate the gradients, which can be rather tricky, I just duplicate the tentacles 
give them a solid fill in this case a purple set it to multiply and lower the opacity to shade the gradient that is underneath it needs a little bit of fiddling with the stacking in the layer order the page down is key here to move those shapes just above the tentacles that you want to shade With the shading in place, there's a clear distinction between the different tentacles. I add a little bit of a pattern just to make it look more interesting. Simple wide circles set to overlay in order to make it easier. I group them first and then set the group to overlay. That way I can easily add to the group without having to manipulate each object afterwards and set it to overlay. The final elements for this design are the suction caps. Inkscape does not allow a tapered dotted line, so I create a shape that I can use as the pattern along a pass. The pass will be a duplicate of one of the tentacles. I remove the taper and have a simple line. I assign the pattern along pass, copy the pattern and paste it to the pass. It will automatically go to a single shape stretch along the pass. I want it to be repeated and mm, it's not really what I'm after. It does not look right even if I assign a different spacing between the shapes. It's not really what I'm after. So. Instead, I create duplicates of my shape, combine them via the union to have one element, paste that onto the path. Sometimes things that should work easily are a little trickier. It did not work right away. I wanted it to be shortened, so shortening the path deleted the pattern. I have no idea why. In the end, I just took the effect off completely and reassigned the pattern along pass. It's simple to delete an effect. You just click on the trash can icon and it's gone. Then reselect it. I select the element I want to use as my pattern, copy it paste it and it's the way I want it. It's stretched along the length of my pass and now I can duplicate that one, adjust the width to make it slightly smaller for the tentacles further back, curve it accordingly, which is one of the great features of Inkscape. It's easy to manipulate those elements. You get a clean vector shape Unlike the earlier video I did for Affinity Designer where these effects are done with bitmap object. You can convert these to paths and then edit each sucker individually. For now, I call this octopus done. Just to show you how quickly it is once you've set up something like this to make a variation, I create a second one, slightly different. I create a new layer for this one, duplicate elements I've already created for the first one and move them across to my new layer. I don't want to use the taper stroke. Instead, I go with the pass effect power stroke, which gives me more control over the shape of the stroke. Rather than the two notes for the tapering, I start with three. I can add more if I want to and adjust the thickness of the stroke at any point. In this case, they taper more towards the end.
Just like in the first design, I duplicate those strokes and adjust them using the node tool. If you're not quite sure how to pose the legs of the octopus, Google for references, look how others have solved the problem and take your inspiration from there. I alter the gradient for this design going from a red to a magenta to blue. I create my little helper shapes to align the gradient, use it on one of the gradients and then copy the style and paste it to all the other elements. I duplicate and color some of the tentacles for the shading shapes, set them to multiply and align them in the layer stack using the page down key. To give the body a little bit more shape, I add a shading shape using the pen tool, setting it to multiply in a dark purple and giving it a bit of a blur. I turn the body into a clipping group and paste the shape inside. I copy the deco elements from the first design and use them on my second octopus. First the dots and then the suckers. After having recorded two videos on octopus and talking about suckers and tentacles all the time, I am very happy to move on. It was good fun though and I enjoyed it a lot. Doing it again in Inkscape showed that the approach is slightly different but it can be done and it's probably doable in Corel Draw or Illustrator just the same. There might be different terms and different tools but the outcome should be very similar. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, maybe even learned something new and feel encouraged to try it yourself. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel, click on the notification icon, leave a comment and I will see you again soon.